Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Simona. I'm a PhD student in chemistry and today I'm going to be telling you guys the hard truths about what it's like to be a PhD student. A common misconception about a PhD is that you just have to be really smart, you gotta show up, put on a lab coat, and then all of a sudden you're gonna make groundbreaking discoveries. But unfortunately the reality of doing a PhD is a lot less glamorous. I mean sometimes I feel like I am cosplaying Walter White as a chemist but at the same time he actually actually makes his products and then 99% of the time my reactions are just failing. So we are still different. <laughs> I guess I just suck. The first hard truth is it's hard to figure out what your project is actually going to be. Unless you show up and you are handed your project on a silver platter, which is usually not the case, you need to do a literature search and figure out what am I going to research? And not only what am I going to research, but how is it going to be novel? How is it going to be different than everything else that's already been done in the field that already exists? What I don't recommend doing, which is what I did, is just show up and start doing work without reading the literature. You must read the literature. That is something that shocked me about being a PhD student is how much reading we have to do. I read two to three hours per day. I am telling you, the more you read, the less time you're going to waste in the lab. I mean, as a chemist and as a PhD student in general, you're probably going to end up wasting lots of your valuable time, but we want to try to minimize it as much as we can. So point number one is summarized by read your literature. Even though it sucks and it's boring, I literally have napping gear in my office space in case I get that tired and sleepy while I'm reading literature, but you have to do it. Something else I do is make literature summaries where I buy like a poster board and then I cut out like all the different compounds and then I organize them on that poster board. Kind of like an art project in like grade seven where I organize them based on their function or what kind of metals they bind to and it just makes it a little bit more fun and then at the end of the day I can look at my poster board when it's completed and say yeah I actually got something done. Which might sound silly, but 99% of the time you feel like you're never doing anything as a PhD student. So it's good to, you know, incorporate tasks that make you feel like you're actually getting work done. A PhD is all about knowledge creation. So you need to, in an undergrad, go show up to class. You're given a textbook. The teacher says, okay, hey, learn all this material. You go home, you study, and you try to retain it. That is knowledge consumption. You're consuming knowledge that already exists. Now, the difference in a PhD is you're expected to know everything that already exists in your field, and then you need to find groundbreaking new discoveries to expand that field that already exists. So it's the difference between knowledge consumption, which is an undergrad thing, and knowledge creation, which is a PhD thing, especially in the STEM. Another thing about a PhD is there's absolutely no structure. Nobody says show up at 8 a.m. and leave at 5. So you need to be self-directed, which is sometimes I do struggle with this, is getting myself to show up and actually get to work because you need to create your entire schedule. Nobody is doing this for you. Which I mean, there's pros and there's cons to this. Pros, um, if you like to sleep until 11, you can probably do that. And I guess the cons are, if you're not disciplined, you could fall behind really, really fast. And all of a sudden you're three years in and you're going to a group presentation and you have nothing to present, which sucks. Which kind of leads me into my next point, which is you have to work with other people in a PhD. You join a lab group that usually has like five to 30 people, sometimes even more. And whenever you're working with other people, there's always a chance that you're not gonna like some of your colleagues. So there's gonna be a little bit of drama, but you still need to find a way to navigate these relationships. And that's because unfortunately in academia, your reputation means a lot. It carries a lot of weight. So as a PhD student, you not only are expected to show up, create new knowledge, and then write about that knowledge, well, you also need to get along with your colleagues. So you need to build your soft skills. You want to be known in the academic realm as a good, nice person to work with because nobody wants to work with somebody that they hate. And academia is a very small circle, I would say. So if word gets around that you suck, well, it's probably gonna be hard to get a job because people are gonna say, oh, Simona applied to this job. And somebody at that job might say, oh my gosh, Simona sucks to work with don't hire her. And then since there's so many applicants, STEM is very competitive, you probably will end up without the job. So soft skills end up being just as important as your lab skills. As a PhD student, you are going to get humbled. You are not always going to be the smartest person in the room, especially if you start traveling and going to conferences. That's where the best of the best are in your field. So you must drop your ego. I always go into rooms believing that I know nothing because I always try to learn something from anybody that I interact with. So having that open mindset and believing that you can always learn something from other people is the only way that you can survive in academia. 
This point is kind of a downer. Just because you go and get a PhD does not mean that you're guaranteed to get a job. In academia, the competition never ends. You're constantly competing for grants. You're constantly competing for awards. You're fighting to get publications. Peer review sucks. So essentially, a PhD is not a guaranteed ticket to employment. So before you try and go and apply for a PhD, make sure you're doing it because you love it. Don't go get a PhD for the money. Go get a PhD if you truly love science and you love the field of research that you're going to commit three to five years of your life to. Because research is really hard. There is going to be hard days. 99.9% .9 of my days are hard. The only way I get up and I still get to the lab is because I really believe in what I do and I'm passionate about it. I always like to describe being a PhD student as a jack of all trades. You literally need to know how to do a bunch of stuff. For example, you need to order your own chemicals and then when they arrive, you need to pick them up. When you pick them up, then you need to log them into your inventory system. And then you need to figure out, well, what kind of experiment am I going to use these chemicals for? So you need to design your experiment. You need to conduct said experiment. During that experiment, you need to also write up all of your experimental observations. So what's going on and why. You need to then interpret the data. If the data is good, well, then you need to become an author and you need to publish that data. Yeah. And then you hopefully cross your fingers and get through peer review. So no, becoming an academic and getting a PhD is not just a sign up sheet to go and work in a lab. And don't get me wrong, you will learn how to conduct experiments and get data. But what really matters is learning how to read, write, and then create a story. And these stories are going to end up as chapters in your PhD dissertation, which is the big thesis, 300 to 500 pages that you write at the end of your three to five years of research to show, hey, look, I did something I, and I discovered something new, I think, I hope. And then you convince everybody that you actually do know what you're talking about because, because you do. I think one of the hardest parts about being a PhD student for me was learning how to deal with failure. I had an entire year of an experiment going wrong over and over and over again. No data. I was so down in the gutter. I was like, I don't want to be here. Why did I sign up to do this? I should have, you know, wrote the MCAT and became a doctor. Like maybe I don't even love chemistry, but I kept trying and I did not give up. I constantly went back to the literature, reading everything that was being done in my field and then trying again. And eventually now I have tons of data. So never give up. Failure is inevitable in a PhD, so you need to learn how to say, okay, I failed, but what did I learn from this failure? And how can I do better next time? As a PhD student, you are going to feel imposter syndrome. You're gonna feel stupid a lot, because like I keep saying, 99% of the time, nothing works. You might feel like you don't belong, but I want you to know that you are smart. Anybody can be smart. You just need to keep trying. And this is where passion comes in. If you're passionate about something, you're never gonna give up. And that's where hard work beats innate intelligence every single time. Nobody has it all figured out, so don't be too hard on yourself if you feel like you don't belong and that you don't have it figured out because none of us really do. We're hopefully, at the end of the five years, it all works out in the end. And you end up as a doctor of philosophy. It's not all for nothing. That's what they tell me. Now I kind of want to touch on like work-life balance in a PhD, which is tough to navigate. As an undergrad student, I always felt like I didn't have time to run. I didn't have time to go to the gym. So a nice part about being a PhD student is that since you build your own schedule, you can go for a run or go to the gym if you really want to. And I believe you should. Getting a PhD is very, very stressful. So try to exercise or have at least a hobby that is unrelated to school that you can do to de-stress. Because in academia, there's always this constant pressure to produce more. So it's important to be able to take a step back and relax, which like, you know, I can say that all I want. I still struggle with this. It's really hard. But moral of the story is do not let your PhD fully consume you. You are still a person at the end of the day that has interests and hobbies beyond science. Hopefully. I mean, I didn't until two years ago, but now I do. If you don't right now, just know that there is still hope. If I could become more than just a classic chemist, I now like rock climb and I run and I write and I read stuff that doesn't have to do with science, you can too. I feel like I talked about a lot of the negative components of being a PhD student, but I'm just trying to be really real with you because like I said, doing a PhD is a huge commitment. So I think it's really important to know what you're signing up for because I definitely didn't. I mean, I've navigated myself thus far and I'm enjoying myself, but I wish I would have had more information before signing up for my PhD. 
I'm going to end with a pro though. A PhD forces you to grow. I've not only grown as a scientist since I got here, but I've grown as a person. I've learned how to become an independent adult. I've learned how to problem solve. I've learned how to write. I've learned how to become an author. So how do I translate all the experiments that I've done and create a story? which is what I did when I submitted my first first authorship paper recently. So fingers crossed it gets through peer review and I get my first publication. So yeah, a PhD can be brutal, but at the end of the day, it's going to shape you and build your character in a way that nothing else could. So do I recommend a PhD? Of course. I will make a video on more positive aspects about being a PhD student. This was just the hard truths. If you made it this far, please make sure to leave a like, comment, save, and or subscribe to my channel and leave a comment if you liked some of the things I said or even try to summarize it so you can see that you learned something. Also feel free to ask me any questions that you have and I will answer them in the comment box down below. Love y'all so much, academic baddies. One shall never give up. I won't, I won't give up. I won't give up and you're not gonna give up. Mwah. Goodbye for now.